Hello, my name is Lars Drudegård. I come from the International Center Against Abuse of Covert Technologies, and I'm very honored that I have been given a chance to interview Mr. Barry Trauer, together with my fellow Danish citizen, Mr. Stephen Bell. My pleasure. Maybe you could introduce yourself. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll tell you how I came into this. Uh, in the 1960s, very early 1960s, I trained with the government microwave warfare establishment. I looked at all aspects of microwave warfare. Uh, and when I finished my time in the military, because I had uh, a lot of expertise in the microwave field, I was asked if I would uh, carry on with this research. Uh, and some people blow this out of all proportion. Uh, I was an agent. I don't like the word secret agent because secret agent, when you say secret agent, people think of James Bond, who wasn't a secret agent and he wasn't a spy. James Bond, uh, the fictitious character, is military intelligence. And I wasn't military intelligence. Uh, I was an agent. I collected information secretly uh, and I spent 11 years collecting information from spies who were a very short part, a very small part of my work. Uh, I also questioned uh, international terrorists, international criminals, uh, anybody of immense interest I questioned and I trained for quite a few years to learn how to do this. They found that there was a, an unusual number of breast cancers, childhood leukemias, uh, other cancers, <clears throat> and they couldn't work out why. So they, they changed some of the staff, and then they went down with leukemias and cancers. Uh, and again, they changed the staff, and then they looked into this and found that they were being microwaved. And this is where the United States became a little bit naughty. They decided to keep this quiet. The Americans used their own people as initial guinea pigs <clears throat> to develop their own weapons. And then uh, when it was discovered what was going on, initially there was a denial that you always get. <clears throat> Then there was a cover-up report, uh, and finally, um, a very renowned professor, I think he has about 18 professorships, uh, John Goldsmith, he wrote the definitive proper report and found that <clears throat> uh, you know low-level microwaves were causing a, an enormous amount of cancers and leukemias and ill effects <clears throat> and by then it, everybody was leaping on to the microwaves as stealth weapons and they go from there which was the 50s uh, right up to and including the present day. The ladies were protesting about having American missiles on English soil. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was a peaceful protest. All they were doing were camping outside the perimeter of the American base. There was no violence, no swearing, no shouting. It was a peaceful protest. 
And it was found that from the American base, the ladies were being microwaved uh, and it was actually measured. They were being microwaved to make them sick. And in fact, when the figures came out, there was a disproportionate amount of tumours, personality changes, suicidal tendencies of the ladies. They were deliberately microwaved uh, by the Americans for protesting about their base. Uh, as, um, uh, you know, with one pulse frequency, you can just make people so suicidal, they can't be bothered to act like a demonstrator anymore. All they want to do is sleep or lay in bed all day. So, um, <clears throat> so if you're targeting demonstrators, you, you make them suicidally depressed. Uh, and they, they're not, they don't care about demonstrating anymore because they're too upset. Whereas if you want to cause a specific psychiatric illness, <clears throat> you would have an infrared device that followed the person and you would link it to a, a pencil-thin microwave source so the microwave beam would always target a specific gland or a specific part of the brain or an eye or a heart. Uh, so you, you would have them being targeted. They, they, can, they can cause insanity. Uh, and it was an experiment. One of the experiments was to take an ordinary sane person, cause insanity, and have a, a psychiatrist who was unknown to everybody diagnose schizophrenia or paranoia or a psychiatric illness that was a successful outcome and the the person would spend the rest of their life in an asylum in misery but to the government scientist that was a success well it's a guinea pig locked up oh yeah 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 i mean humans the difference between humans are like guinea pigs mm. if they want to experiment on you by the thousand, they will. And you can be driven to insanity and death, uh, and you just become a tick in a box right. without any so much as a, a feeling. <laughs> yeah, and this is what they do, and this is why they are above the law. It wasn't until around the 70s that this became secret. Uh, for some reason, it was talked about openly. You know, if I'm talking to a spy and I, I want to find out where the spy was trained, how the spy was recruited uh, over the five-year period of training and everything that went on, it's going to take years and years and years. But if you want to talk about microwaves and chips and microwave weapons, they'll just talk about it over a biscuit and a cup of tea. It wasn't secret. Uh, most governments talked openly or people talked openly about it. It wasn't until the 70s, mid-70s, that the, I think the full potential of this globally uh, came into force and the governments decided then to put everything under the Official Secrets Acts. But until then, nothing was secret. It was just talked about openly. That's actually very interesting. Yeah, yeah I mean, it just wasn't... People didn't know about it. It wasn't general knowledge. You wouldn't meet somebody in the supermarket and say, have you got a chip in? But, but the people that, that had them knew they had them, and they would go around talking about them, and, yeah, yeah. and other people would talk about them. Uh, whereby with the special forces you could send down if you had an idea roughly what country they were in you could send down a beam from a satellite the, the chip would be switched on by the beam energised and would send a signal back uh, you've got that, that type of chip the other type 
is when it is pulsing continuously to stimulate, let's say, a gland in the body uh, at, a, at a set frequency to produce a specific chemical that will produce a specific biochemical response in the brain. So you, you can have one working permanently and you can have them working intermittently and you can have them that will only work if they are stimulated. Yeah, I mean voices are the easiest ones mm -hmm. because all you have to do is stimulate, uh, stimulate the cochlea w with a, a set resonant frequency, it's very easy. Uh, voices are very easy um, and the it isn't people imagining voices they physically hear them they physically hear as I'm talking to you my voice isn't inside your brain my voice goes no further than an inch into your ear no further at all uh, it's the electrical signal that makes you interpret how I sound. And once you've got this electrical signal, which can be a chip or a, lots of things, you can physically make people hear voices, certain voices. And it can be any conversation. Um, and it can be anybody you want to hear. It can be a soft, angelic voice. It can be a god uh, it could be something that scares you like a devil. It, it could be anything. Fair enough. So I was there. I went into the back of a big black car and it took me off in the dark and then underneath a huge building in the dark and I, I was suddenly thinking, well, hang on, this could be a bullet in the back of the head time. Uh, I'm getting uncomfortable here. Uh, but he took me out and took me to a room and he said, I'm an international scientist, he said, and something is really really worrying me uh, and I have to tell somebody who can tell the world. Now I actually knew what he told me I knew was going on anyway because it had been discussed uh, in other countries but um, he said it is now possible to genetically change bacteriums and virus genetically change them. What has been developed now <clears throat> is if bacterium they can lay and and yeasts they can lay in the soil for hundreds of years in a dormant stage um, and it's known by grave diggers or people who dig up old graves that it's possible when light comes on the bacterium to regenerate the bubonic plague that's been laying in the ground for several hundred years. It only wants that particular frequency and bang, it, it, it's active again. <clears throat> you don't need more than two brain cells to work out where you go from here. Virus are neither dead nor alive they in, inhabit hosts. If I put a virus inside a dormant bacteria that I know I can spring to life, I go to Norway on a holiday, or Denmark, or Sweden, I just spread the virus around the forests with the dormant bacteria, and I come back. And I can wait if I like, a hundred years, two hundred years, or two hours, makes no difference to me. And then all I have to do with harp or a similar device is put the frequency, the microwave frequency off the ionosphere down onto Norway. Whenever I feel like it, the virus 
will spring to life because their host has sprung to life. This is where we are. So countries can now, just by introducing bacteriums and viruses and whatever, they can totally devastate uh, the economic possibilities of another country. But doesn't that mean that we are in a new Cold War and that the entire military is obsolete? Oh, you're absolutely right. <clears throat> we are in a new Cold War. Um, and this is why countries um, are developing this. I mean, really developing this. Uh, and this is why all of the microwave transmitters are going up everywhere. Uh, because somebody, if they wanted to, could use them for other effects. The system is up and running. In a three month period, I had five lady police officers in this house, all with cancer. I've had a series of calls from officers saying that their personalities have been changed. Uh, whenever I go to a country, uh, and I did, I think the year before, I did six countries, I think last year or the year before, The questions always come around to Tetra and they always come around to aggressive behavior from the police since they started using Tetra. And I have the government documents that say this can cause neurological damage, this can cause cancer, this can cause uh, aggressive behavior and personality changes. Uh, this was at the beginning of the experiment and the experiment with Tetra is not due to finish until 2018. So it's an experimental system. Um, the United States one uh, was, was quite interesting. <clears throat> It was to do with special forces uh, probably five or six years ago. They came back from a mission And of the six or eight gentlemen that were in the special forces, five of them, I believe, went home. I think it was five or six went home and severely <coughs> beat their wives or children or both, where some of the wives died, some ended up in hospital, but they were severely beaten. And it was believed that the communications apparatus they were using uh, was in training the brain and stimulating violence. And this was Fort Bragg. Now, I either had a phone call from Fort Bragg or I had a phone call from the embassy to ask if I knew what frequencies could cause this. Um, because I ended up talking to each. And I said... Don't tell me, I will tell you what frequencies they have been using. Now, the special forces don't just hold them up. They're on permanently. So we're talking massive entrainment, far beyond what the ordinary person would suffer. But it induced such a level of entrainment and violence. <clears throat> so I wrote, I, I told them... Uh, what frequencies I believe they would be using. I sent them documentary evidence and the whole thing uh, was, was hushed over and it, it was on the news, but then they obviously, I would imagine, changed the frequency. It's been shown that a child using a cell phone, just an ordinary school child, 
if the child uses the phone for just two minutes, the brain waves can take up to two hours to return to normal. Two hours. And that's been published. Now, in those two hours, the child's brain is not acting as it should. And it could demonstrate itself in a number of ways. For instance, if, you, if the child were in school and made a quick call from the playground, it could be lack of concentration, hyperactivity, bad behaviour. It could be anything like that. And that would slowly ease off over two hours. Now, that's just from two minutes. Now, if a child makes a phone call every couple of hours, the brain is going to be entrained permanently. And it's already been published by the industry that a child uh, using microwaves just before bed will have his or her sleep totally disrupted by entrainment. I cited, I think, 200 schools in Europe where a transmitter had been put in or near the playground where they had leukaemia clusters. Um, some of our own MPs here have stood up in Parliament to say that they have 11 children under the age of 11 with leukaemia around a transmitter or 18 children. I mean, it, it's so. I mean, cancers are reaching epidemic proportions. There are lots of different types of cancers coming up now. I would think, I know in China, they've just had a 3,000% increase in parotid gland cancer, which is the side of the face where you would hold a mobile. Uh, we're getting cancers of the eye coming up. Obviously, brain tumours. In fact, brain tumours are quite quite enormous now in, in terms of numbers that uh, I read a report and I read this out in Canada last year um, people are so worried about the numbers of brain tumours that they've re-diagnosed 10,000 brain tumours as endocrine cancers to take them off the statistics and I do know that in the European Union uh, we have been told that cancers are at epidemic proportions uh, and we're talking generally cancers between the ear and the brain. Years ago, our government said to its scientists, when it comes to microwaves, uh, you will only talk about things to do with heat. And that is it. So they won't even discuss anything else. They will deny anything that doesn't have anything to do with heat. They even, dis they even deny all of their 40 years of research leading up to this. Yeah. Although they said this can cause cancer and all the damage, they say, no, it can't. We're only looking at heat and heat is all that matters. Yeah, yeah uh, um, I prefer to call it lying. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think I've never known so many liars uh, in my life as what is coming out now right. from the government. Mm. Uh, they, I mean, to put it simply, they did all the research, they knew the dangers, and then they decided to lie to the public for no other reason than to, prov to save themselves with lawsuits and to make money for industry. And that's written down, and I've got that written down. Okay. Um, so for the last <clears throat> 40 years, 
the government, the English government, has been lying to the people. And the American government, the Canadian, the Australian, they have been lying. Uh, they have been lying to protect industry, protect their profits, to protect themselves from lawsuits. Uh, so it, it, they are really just liars. <clears throat> and, and it's provable. I, I made a statement in Birmingham, in this country, probably 15 years ago, uh, and I haven't changed it since. And I've said that I believe that this industry and the part of the government which is encouraging them will be responsible for more civilian deaths and suffering than all the terrorist groups in the world ever. And with the growth of the industry over the last 15 years, I would say now that these people are probably going to cause more death and suffering than the entire Second World War. And is that genocide? Yes, without a shadow of a doubt. And are they going to get away with it? Yes, because they are untouchable. They are outside the law. Who is actually behind those decisions? Is this sanctioned by the WHO? Sanctioned by the World Health Organization, without a shadow of a doubt. It is the same people. Um, it's the same people sit on the ICNAP certificate. They sit on our government's health protection agency, sit on the World Health Organization. Uh, it's the same people. It's the same people. There's probably no more than 20 of them. <clears throat> But they, yes, they are going to, in my opinion, commit the worst genocide this planet has ever known. Not just people, but animals, plants. They are probably going to cause more destruction uh, than a global war. And in several hundred years' time, Uh, people will look back, whoever survives, and look at what we try to do to stop them. Operation Paperclip, at the end of the war, Uh, the scientists were pardoned, most of them. They were pardoned for all of the people they had killed, experimented on. They were given new identities, mostly in the United States. Uh, they were given new identities, lived an ordinary civilian life, very well paid, and they went to work in laboratories for the American government. And they handed over all of their research, and this is where it came from. And this was the basis of all of this, Operation Paperclip. If they could catch somebody and keep their name secret, mm -hmm. that was Operation Paperclip, and they took them back. Okay. They took them back and they kept them. They used all of their resources, Uh, and there was a lot of scientists. They used all of their resources, uh, and, and that was the basis of the mind control, the drugs, and everything else. I, I do know one experiment, just to give you some examples. They, they, I know that they found that um, with, with one of the subheadings <clears throat> was uh, the microwaves on pregnant women, and they found that... <clears throat> they could cause a 57.7 increase in miscarriages in pregnant women, uh, which is just one experiment. You know, So what you're actually doing is killing 57% of all the children. Uh, again, mixing microwaves or, or electromagnetic waves with... Uh, LSD, lysergic acid, on four-year-olds. Um, 
they, they just experimented on people causing any amount of suffering to the point of death. And if people ended up in metal cages uh, or stone boxes for the rest of their lives, uh, that was the way it was going to be because they were allowed to be experimented on. But um, as I say, it, it you know, it, there is no boundary. There is nothing which, to me, is too low. I mean, if you're if you're going to attack a uterus and a child, uh, you can't get much lower. Um, and this is what they were all about. At the end of the Second World War, uh, a committee was formed by all of the Western Allies, the United States, and Russia. <clears throat> Uh, and it was called the Nuremberg Treaty. And the Nuremberg Treaty was agreed by all the countries uh, from the end of the Second World War. It was set up uh, to stop people like Joseph Mengele, the Doctor of Death, mm -hmm. in Bergen-Belsen concentration camp where he experimented on twins. <clears throat> and they, from the Japanese torturing the American and the British and the European soldiers, the Germans uh, experimenting, uh, the Nuremberg Treaty was set up and it's very defined and very succinct. And it says that no person may be experimented upon for any reason, and this includes microwave irradiation, for any reason without their consent. And before they give their consent, they must have full knowledge of the length of the experiment, the outcomes, any potential dangers, any potential ill healths, <clears throat> Uh, it must be fully understood and explained and they must give individual consent. Mm -hmm. uh, and this includes TETRA, which is an experiment that's going on until 2018 to look for cancer and brain damage. So everybody using TETRA is actually breaking the law, mm -hmm. the people organising them. So that was set up. Mm -hmm. So experiments on people, service personnel, the police officers with Tetra, microwaves, it is all illegal according to the Nuremberg Treaty. As far as I know, the Nuremberg Code mm -hmm. and the Nuremberg Treaty was created after the Nuremberg Trials. Right, yep. And in the Nuremberg Trials, there was a specific trial called the Doctor's Trials. Yep. Do you recall the sentencing of those trials? They were hanged. Yeah. Oh, I, and I've written it. I've written it in my papers and I've said it on air in the radio. In fact, I said it, I was on um, international radio. It went out to 95 countries two Sundays ago. And I said, scientists at the end of the war were hanged for what scientists today are doing and getting away with. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yep. Mm -hmm. Sentences you to death by hanging at such time and place as higher authority may direct.